You know, as I talk about African unity, China refuses to get out of my mind. And I hope I'm wrong. But the Chinese know that we are disunited. And they know that in our disunited state we can be manipulated. And they are in the process of manipulating us. So today, there is not a single African country in which the Chinese have not built a stadium. They think we love stadia. <laughs> there is not a single African country in which they are not building some roads. The Chinese are capable of delivering three types of qualities of the things they do. Quality number one, they take to the United States of America and Europe. Quality number two, they take to their fellow Asian countries, including India. Quality number three, which is at the very bottom, they dump in Africa, and the Africans consume them gleefully. <laughs> and it's because of our disunity, we are incapable of speaking with one voice. You know, many times when I look at Ghana, the Ghanaian president whom I respect, is invited to Beijing to negotiate with Beijing, as indeed the Kenyan president would be, and the Burundi president, to negotiate with Beijing on a bilateral basis. And when they invite African leaders, they humor them, complete with guards of honor and 21 gun salutes, so that they think that they are equal. But the Ghanaian economy's GDP is possibly one-third of the GDP of the city of Beijing. The Burundian economy is only two billion United States dollars, which is the same amount that an American professional boxer earns in one year. <laughs> the economy of Benin is smaller than Coca-Cola's advertising budget for one year. In other words, African economies are Mickey Mouse economies, which cannot compete. And because we are disunited, we are incapable of moving as one unit. The European Union wants to have what they call bilateral negotiations with Benin. The European Union's combined economy, perhaps the largest market in the world today, is something in the neighborhood of 14 trillion United States dollars if you combine the European Union economy and you have bilateral negotiations with Benin. That is smaller than the turnover of Standard Chartered Bank. In other words, the president of Standard Chartered Bank could very well be the one negotiating with the president of Benin, if we were to be realistic. But that is because we are disunited. And I'm submitting to us that the only antidote to that is our unity. I know, as I said yesterday, that there are already efforts to move Africa in the direction of unity at the economic front, but the suspicions in Africa are too great. The African politician is perhaps, with due respect to them, Africa's curse.